Hello everyone, this is Thorsen11 and I'm back. Well, yes, I am back. Um, hopefully I'll be uploading videos now every Tuesday, Thursday, possibly Wednesday. But yeah, for my first Let's Play, I'm going to be playing the game that I helped make last spring. There's a team of four of us working on this, and uh, yeah, let's get started right away. It's called Teak Namal. Well, the story is about um, uh, the chieftain's daughter of this mine tribe, and uh, her father's gravely ill, and so she needs to pass this uh, test uh, to claim her rightful place as uh, the next chieftain. So here we go with the tutorial using the arrow keys to move up and down, control or spacebar to attack, but also if you attack levers, it activates them. Which allows you to open doors. Like that. And also we have rotatable rooms like this. I can rotate them either way, up or down. With W or S, lower them and lock them in place. Yeah. So this is about uh, four months worth of work that we put into this game. Shing about four months worth of work to uh, build this pretty much from scratch and see. Uh, all we had really was a direct X wrapper, so we didn't have a whole lot to go on. We had to build pretty much everything in this, but uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Totally worth it, and let's see if I can remember how to do all the levels. Um, I mainly did uh, all the level building. But, uh, and also built a level editor, which I will probably show off at the end. But, yeah, for right now, let's play the game. So we have 13 levels in the game. Each one offers a variety of puzzles and combat. Crap, don't die, don't die. I'll restart. So yeah, variety of uh, had tried to get a variety of both combat and puzzles, but mainly puzzles. Die. All right. Yeah, it was a good challenge to work on uh, building a game in as short a time as we had. We uh, actually, a lot of the work done that we did, a lot of the work that we got done, we actually ended up doing within like the last month and a half that we had. But we had a lot of nice, we had a lot of planning and um, good uh, coders overall on the project. And uh, this is what we came up with: a good, puzzly dungeon crawler, mine-themed. I know exactly how to win because I've beat it dozens of times. Play test every single level. Yeah, that's a lot of enemies up in those rooms. But uh, in our game, we made combat completely. Well, not completely optional, but. Darn it. I'm off my game. I haven't played this in two months. there. One of the mechanics that we really tried to focus on and tried to hone in was uh, the, the combat with the swords. Uh, being able to, you are able to hold it out and enemies will be able to hit it, but originally you could just do this indefinitely and just, it was just kind of spammy. Now, now, as soon as an enemy hits it, your sword comes back. You have to retract your sword every time an enemy hits it. So you can't hold it out indefinitely. But if you know a guy's coming, you can just hold it out and they'll walk into it. And this part is all about just running for your lives. Because good luck fighting that many guys. We use, um, in early testing, we found out that uh, the combat was really, really monotonous. And 
because we were trying to focus more on uh, the puzzle elements of the game. We tried to make the combat a little bit faster, a little bit quicker, and a little bit more rewarding. So we dropped the number of hits enemies could take from... Uh, well, they used to be able to take five hits. Now, they take two. Which is... We found out a much, much better uh, health for them. That way, players and stuck killing 10, 20 enemies when they want to be doing puzzles. Yeah, no, I'm not going to fight you guys. You guys have fun. Nope, not you either. I'm just going to run through the level. Fight you. But nope, not you. And as you can see in all these animated cutscenes, we have uh, the calendar getting filled out more and more as uh, the game progresses. Yeah, the combat still isn't the best, but what the heck? We did we did this in four months, and this and that is what a lot of the combat used to be like. With a lot of just standing around a corner, lining up for enemies, and just waiting for them to die in your sword. And so, yeah, we had a. We were fortunate enough to actually get a artist to work with us on our team, Joe Vick. He did uh, all the art for the game. Well, okay, not all the art, mostly. Uh, a few were done by our, actually our tech director, and that would be like the pressure plates that you see here. Stepping on that was done by actually our tech director, but yeah, our artist did uh, a lot of really good job with all this. Yeah, really appreciate his efforts to help us. So, we are now, I believe, on level 8. Uh, this one is one of my favorites to design, because it started off much smaller. But when it became way too easy, I just had to add a little extra bit over here. So we have that door there. A little rotation here. We have decisions. We have we've seen this lever down here. So I hit that first. And up here, we have two levers to hit. This one or this one? Well, turns out this one is also attached to that one. So if you hit either of those, the other one flips as well, and it's, it's a little bit tricky when people trying to figure out how to open the door. A few more levels. This one is all about decisions, because you have three levers, three doors, which ones do you open? The top lever actually opens this bottom door, which is the one that lets all the bad guys out. We originally, we had a lot more plans for the the stone guardians or whatever you want to call them, but nah, ran out of time. But I believe what we have is sufficient. This is this is one of my favorites. Whole bunch of doors, and you just got random levers scattered throughout. You got to figure out which levers open which of the doors, and or just flip all of them. It's really easy when you know what you're doing. <laughs> Alright, there's our Indiana Jones reference. At least I have not seen any snakes in here. No one likes snakes. This is the one level that I did not design. Uh, our producer designed this one. And I... Ow. Completely failed at it. I don't remember how this one exactly went. Ready? And put 
the lever and then run. Nope. I gotta fight them. That was fine. Could have been worse. And run, 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 run away. Alright, and nope. One more level. The final level. The last level. Let's see if I can remember how to do this one. This is probably by far the most complicated of all. Not the way I need to go. This is probably the best made level in the game, and I wish I would have had more of like this. But wish all I want. They didn't happen. Come on, where's that lever that hits that door? Just wait on there. in here. Yep, 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 run. Yep, there we go. That's the lever I need to hit. There's actually two ways to do this level. One is the easy puzzle with a lot of combat. The other one is harder puzzle with less combat. What I could have done is I could have gone through, hit the switch right above me there, which would open this door, but it also would have opened all of these doors here, and very few times can I actually make it through that combat. And now to run to the exit. And run from all 78 enemies in this level. Run away, run away, run away. Yeah, this level did not turn out nearly as good as I was hoping. It, uh, enemies weren't moving fast enough, and. Well, there it is. There's the end. And that is what me and three other guys worked on for, uh, well, there's the credits right there. Team Failed Apocalypse. And that is it. Thank you all for watching. And this is actually more for my team to get our video up on YouTube than myself. But thank you all for watching and have a nice day.